OK, now what I want to show you, I want to show you how I would dissect a, a heart if I was demonstrating it some, to students. So first thing we need to do is you have a look at the heart. I've positioned it in the same way as the heart would be positioned actually inside the animal's body. You might notice the size of this heart. This is actually an ox heart. Mostly for class dissections, we'd only be able to use a lamb's or a pig's heart, which is much smaller. So this is positioned as it would be if it was my heart. Your own heart, by the way, is about the size of your fist and it's positioned in the centre, tipped just slightly over to the left. I just need to check that I've got him the right way around. And if anybody who knows what I'm checking for, I'm checking to see how thick the muscles are of the heart and I need to turn him around. I've got the heart positioned now in a position where he would actually be inside the ox's body. So this is my left hand side, therefore this is the left hand side of the ox's heart. This is my right hand side, therefore this is the right hand side of the ox's heart. So left, right. That's something that people find very confusing when they look at pictures of the heart in books or actually look at the heart. You need to imagine that it's actually inside you. Left, right. Now, first thing you might notice if we look at the outside before we go any further, is that this was a very well-fed cow. And there is a lot of fat around the heart. And this is a very good point, because if you have a look, there is a lot of fat around these blood vessels which go down towards the end of the heart. What you need to think about is that the heart is a muscle. Because the heart is a muscle, it needs a very, very rich supply of blood to itself in order that it can beat, because so that all of that muscle can contract. It needs a very good supply of blood. So the whole of the heart is supplied with blood by these blood vessels, the coronary arteries and the coronary veins, spreading out down to get oxygen right to the very bottom of the heart. And the problem that humans have, and the problem that this cow probably has, is that there is a lot of fat built up around the blood vessels going down to the bottom of the heart. And if that blood, if that fat is inside those vessels, it can narrow those vessels, block those vessels. And when that happens, that is when you have a heart attack, where the blood vessel, if it was blocked, say, where my finger is here, there would be no oxygen getting to the muscle below my finger, and that part of the heart would die. And the heart would go into cardiac arrest and even stop. And that damage is permanent. So even if you recover, that damage is permanent. This is where they would repair the blood vessels using a stent or even a bypass in order to get oxygen back to the base of the heart. So before we go inside, and all hearts, by the way, that come from butchers are slashed, so we're going to ignore that slash there. Before we go inside, let's have a little look at the top of the heart. Now, this has not been dissected out, it's just been cut out. And so what has happened is that the butcher has cut away a lot of the tissue at the top. But what he's revealed for us, which is very interesting for us, is that he's revealed the two major blood vessels leaving the heart. These are both arteries. Arteries go away from the heart. If you have a look, you can actually see that the these blood vessels have got different size, thickness walls. This one has got the thickest walls of all. This is the aorta. And in us, the aorta would be wide enough for us to put about a finger's width. In this ox, I can easily get almost all of my hand into there. Now, what I want you to imagine is that when this heart is pumping, the entire of this blood vessel is full of blood and under high pressure. What's perhaps most interesting in the way that this has been cut, and you don't often see this on the smaller hearts, is that you can clearly see the valves which prevent the blood from flowing the wrong way in between beats. So you've got a valve here where I'm putting the mounted needle. See these pockets? And you have a valve on this blood vessel again with pockets, so in between beats of the heart, the blood gathers in the pockets, the pockets come together and stop the backflow of blood. There are other valves 
which we'll see when we get inside. So let's have a little look and think about what's going on here. This is the top of the heart. Mammals like the, like the ox and like us have a double circulation. The blood's going to go through the heart twice in one complete circulation to the body. So if I just turn him back towards me, so now I've got him in the position again that he is in the body, what actually happens is that the blood will come from the body and go first into the right-hand side of the heart. And it goes in into this area, which is all tatty on this heart, but it goes into this area here, which is the right atria. Now, it comes to it from into the right atria through the major veins. And we haven't got any veins on this heart, but it comes in from the major veins. And the major one, nice name to remember, the vena cava, the cavernous vein. Massive great vein that brings the blood back from the body into the right atrium, then through the right atrium into the right ventricle. And then the blood leaves via the pulmonary artery. And it's easy to identify which is the pulmonary artery here because the blood is only going to the lungs. It's not under hugely high pressure. It's the thinner of these two blood vessels, the thinner walls. It then returns into the left-hand side, into the left atria, and down into the left ventricle, and out from there via the aorta, the massive, massive artery, the major artery. So I think we need to look inside to see the route that it follows. Now, there's a couple of ways to dissect in a heart. My preferred way is to open both sides of the heart up separately. And the butcher has already made a bit of a start, but I'm not terribly impressed with the butcher's dissection skills. So we're going to bypass some of the butcher's dissection skills. And what we're going to do is we're going to go either side of this major blood vessel, which, remember, is providing oxygenated blood for the muscle. I'm going to go down this side first. Actually, I might go down this side first because of that slash. This is the left-hand side. When you're using a scalpel, nice sharp blade with your scalpel, make a line first so you know where you're going. You're going from the atria, pointing towards the apex of the heart. Use your scalpel almost like a brush, brush strokes. Don't hack right in. And what you can probably see as I'm doing this is the massive thickness of muscle that I'm cutting through. Go through more and more, more and more muscle. And I'm nearly there. I can, f I can feel the next couple of cuts, and I'm going to actually be in to that ventricle. Still got a little way to go. Just give you an idea of the thickness of that muscle on that side of the heart. Here we are, getting there. Now, with the smaller hearts, this isn't anywhere near such a long job to get all the way in. But now, if I just go a little bit further, now you should be able to see that I am opening up a cavity with massive thickness of walls. So a long way into that. I'll actually take it right up here so I take some of the tension out. There we go. With brush strokes, very careful not to cut your fingers off. There. Now, what you're looking into now is the left-hand side of the heart, the major powerhouse of the heart. So let's go down the other side. We go down the other side towards the apex. Just brush strokes with the scalpel. And fairly quickly, ignoring where the butcher has cut them, should be able to see that I am very, very quickly through and into the cavity of the atria. You see the difference in the thickness of the, of the muscle walls, still with these nice gentle brush strokes with the scalpel. You don't want to hack. You don't want to put the scalpel straight in. You want to gently cut away. So you are gently opening the heart. You are not really doing it too much damage. If you just go piling in, you're not going to see anything when you get in there. So now, beginning to see what's going on inside the heart. So let's concentrate 
on the right hand side. Remember this is the weaker side of the harp. I'm going to get mounted needle, very useful for tracking the pattern, the root. I'm going to go in through the right atria and you should see that I have now peered in the right ventricle. So the secret has come through, the mounted needle has come through and it's come through through this set of tissue, you can see this tissue here, which is the valves. So this is the valve that is between the atria and the ventricle, is the atroventricle valve. It's a huge valve because when this heart beats, the purpose of this valve is to stop the blood from flowing back out of the heart the way it's come in. What we want to have happen instead is that when the heart beats, we want the blood to leave the heart, pass the, pass the valve and out through the pulmonary artery and back to the lungs. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to carry on. I'm going to cut through all this fat. A lot of fat to cut through. I think this is a sign of a very healthy, happy animal who ate a lot before his final demise. And now Butcher's Slash is in a very diffi difficult position but now you should be able to see how this side of the heart, the muscle is thin. You've got the strings that hold the basically tendon tissue that holds the valve from going the inside out. It is not a correct name, but I call these parachute valves because when the heart beats, the strings stop the valve turning inside out in the same way the strings of a parachute stop the parachute turning inside out. The heart beats, the blood leaves, and it is probably even easier to see now these pocket valves that prevent the blood from flowing back in between beats of the heart. Otherwise, the blood would flow back. So we've got two valves, one to stop the blood going from the ventricle back up into the atria, and one to stop the blood flowing back into the ventricle between beats. All your heart is, is a pump. And valves are what make pumps work in one direction only. So let's have a look at this side then. I need to go a little bit further down. So why has this side got such thick muscles and the other side got thinner muscles? This side, the right hand side, is only pumping blood to the lungs. If it had the same pressure, your lungs would instantly fill with fluid in between each beat of your heart. So you can't afford to have that pressure going into such a delicate organ as your, as your lungs. So this side beats with less pressure. This side, and remember this is from an ox, this is a big animal, this side has to have enough strength when it contracts to pump the blood all the way around the body. There is no other pump. The pump blood returning to the heart is moving when the heart beats. This is the only thing that moves that blood. Now we've opened up the left-hand side of the heart. Notice, again, you know, the massive thickness of the muscle on this side. And also, everything that was on the right-hand side is multiplied on the left-hand side. So we've got the thickness of the muscle is so much greater, but also look at the strength of the, the, the fibres that prevent backflow of blood, prevent the, the valve turning in the wrong way round. In fact, they're so strong that if I take my mounted needle and take just one of these strings and take it round the mounted needle, it is strong enough, something as thin as a piece of cotton, for me to hold the whole heart up on. Because when this heart beats, these are the only thing that are going to prevent the blood going the wrong way. So these are the strings that hold the valve that separates the right atria, the left atria, sorry, from the left ventricle. And you don't want the heart going, the blood going the wrong way through the heart when the heart beats. So where does the blood go? So the blood has come from the lungs in through the pulmonary vein, which unfortunately has been removed from this one where they cut it off along the top, goes down through the valve. It's the only way it can go is down through the valve. The valve won't allow blood to go the wrong way. 
it fills the left ventricle. The left ventricle contracts and the blood is going to leave via the aorta. Now, it's going to take a little bit of effort for me to cut away all of this flesh so we can open up the aorta. Let's take a slightly better line than the one I did and let's cut through all of this. So, nice healthy little cow, lots and lots and lots of fat. Try not to hack him, trying to stroke this flesh away. That's it. A little bit wider. Pull it gently apart and I'm heading for the aorta. I don't think the fat in a living animal is quite as hard to cut through as the fat in a dead one. Here we go. Not so easy to get through. Let's try a little bit offline. There we are. Ah, you can suddenly feel the tension going when you're in the right place. So here we are, just cut through the valve tissue. So laid open for us now. You have the entire cavity of the left ventricle. You have the valve with the tissue to prevent the valve going the wrong way. And you have the funnel that will bring the blood into the aorta. And I've cut through the aorta and these are the valves, the half moon, the semilunar valves that pre will prevent the blood flowing back the wrong way. And the blood then is pumped through this, up from the ventricle, up through the aorta and to the whole of the body of the animal. Just to recap, one final go through the whole thing again. What you need to know is that the heart is a pump. You need to know that the heart has four chambers, two atria and two ventricles. You need to know that for one complete circulation of the body, the blood goes through the heart twice. That it comes in to the right atria, down into the right ventricle, out to the lungs, back to the left atri atria, into the left ventricle, and out to the rest of the body. You need to know that there is no connection between the two sides of the heart, so the blood has to follow that complete route all the way around. And you need to know that when the heart contracts, it contracts simultaneously on both sides. So the ventricle, the atria empty, there is a pause, and then the ventricle, the massive pump in action, empties both ventricles at the same time. And finally, the great little detail to know is that the purpose of the valves is to stop the blood flowing the wrong way. And that there are four valves altogether there are two separating the atria from the ventricle, the atrioventricular valves, and there are two at the entrances to the two massive arteries that leave the heart. So the two massive arteries are the pulmonary artery, which leaves the right-hand side, and the aorta that leaves the left-hand side, and they both have valves to prevent the black backflow of blood. All of this together ensures that blood can only go around the body in one direction. So I hope that that's everything that you need to know and I hope it made sense. And I think that this is a wonderful thing to look at.